All right, now that we've uh, finally finished the beanie cap um, window area for the flight deck of the space shuttle, it's time to move on and talk about the thermal protection system and how we're going to represent that. Now, uh, some people just decide to paint it as best they can. Uh, some people decide to use a decal for it, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. And uh, some people decide to physically recreate the tile and um, that I think is a very very challenging thing to do although it's possible I've seen it done um, our approach is going to be kind of a combination of both and I'd like to talk about uh, the decal portion of it first now what you see in front of you here is the cutting edge 72083 sheet orbital tiles now this sheet is no longer available um, but it's pretty good it consists of the underside the sides and some areas at the top of the wing. Uh, some instructions on you know how to get the best results and a very very nice color coded um, guide as far as where to put each particular um, decal. Now this sheet is out of production and if you get a hold of one you're lucky um, but it does suffer some criticism because a lot of people say that oh it's too gray and the tile is just supposed to be black well, that's not exactly true. The tiles on the bottom of the orbiter often turn gray due to the effect of, a, of heat over time, but the tiles on the side of the orbiter uh, remain more or less black because they don't, are not, they're not subjected to the kind of heat that the, that the bottom is. So really, if you're going to do the tiles, uh, you would do the bottom ones gray as you see here with perhaps some, some uh, dry brush work or some pastel work or some artist oils to kind of give the streaking atmospheric effect to it and then the tiles that are on the side uh, these should be mostly black so you'd have to kind of tone down these from gray to black and sort of blend them from the sides to the bottom and it's going to take some uh, specific creative capability um, you're going to have to have some artist skills to do that to really get the best results so these are mostly gray and uh, you're, so you're starting out with gray and, and then having to work uh, from there. Now, I said these are no longer production. However, um, you can get these. This should look familiar to you. Uh, these are from a gentleman named Ed Visconti. And he sells these online. And he has quite an extensive set of directions for them, uh, even more so than cutting edge. But if you look at this, uh, you can see they're essentially very, very similar, and he probably used the cutting edge as a base and modified a little bit and maybe improved the product a little bit. These are uh, printed off on regular decal paper with one sheet of, um, excuse me, one layer of gloss over them, so you'd have to cut each of these decals out individually, as opposed to the cutting edge sheet, which is a, a traditional print on film uh, cut to spec kind of sheet. Now, the big difference aside from that between this sheet and the uh, cutting edge sheet is the fact that you can see that this is mostly black. So Ed here used uh, black as his base color, or off black, maybe a slight bit of gray, instead of the, the gray. So you can kind of look at them sort of side by side here. So here's Ed's and there's the cutting edge. So you can start out with black and then work this into gray uh, with some artisols and pastels. You can start out with gray and work this into, into um, the sides into some black with some artisols and pastels. Um, but that's kind of your two choices. Again, this is tough to find, uh, these not so much. Okay, so that is the way we're going to represent with one of these sheets, uh, represent the bottom of the order. Now, let's talk about the sides and the top because that's a completely different thing. This publication here is a space and miniature number three on the space shuttle, a guide for scale model builders. Now, this is done by Michael Mikowski and it was originally produced in 1991 and this is a 2010 reprint. Now this is a must have if you really want to do an accurate large scale space shuttle and it gives you a lot of information you're not going to find elsewhere. So just right off the bat here they jump into or Mike here jumps into um, the solid rocket boosters and their specific markings and colors and he even has it broken down uh, by mission for the missions that have been flown uh, prior to this publication. And that's a nice, nice thing to have. 
and then it goes on to describe the external tank and the coloration and then even further into some payload bay configuration stuff and then finally the actual thermal tile uh, and blanket layout for each of the shuttles you've got the Columbia here and Challenger which were very very similar and then you've got the other three orbiters um, Atlantis, Discovery, Endeavor which um, are a bit different and it pretty much shows you, you know, how that's broken down as well but again this publication was released in 1991 and a lot went on after 1991 and, and so this is not completely accurate if you're going to model a space shuttle um, you know, later in the operational period of the shuttle so the next thing you might consider is this book here this is called Space Shuttle by Dennis Jenkins and this is a wonderful if a bit expensive book and it has a lot of information on the entire development of the Space Shuttle series and all the specific missions and just more than you could ever really absorb quite frankly but it's a wonderful resource and one of the things that it has in it is this little page right here which I photocopied and this is a specific down to the thermal blanket um, reference for all of the thermal protection system tiles and blankets on the upper uh, and, and sides of, of the um, shuttle order does not have the bottom that's in another another page it's on another page but we're not going to really do the bottom except with decals so this here is what we're going to use now the problem is I can still only use this as as kind of a baseline because there were changes even after this this book came out in 2001 and reflected the first 100 missions up to the year 2000 so we flew a bit more after that Columbia's accent was after this this publication here, which was also done by Mr. Jenkins and uh, an uh, associate, George Frank, was published in 2006, and this uh, chronicles the return to flight of Discovery, and this is in the wake of the Columbia uh, disaster, and it talks about all the changes that were made, and there were some significant changes to the thermal protection system and the design uh, in the wake of the loss of Columbia. So this represents, if you're going to do a late model shuttle, this represents um, the best source of photographic information that I've come across and uh, is a really, really, really good reference for uh, tile location and blanket location. There's some great pictures in here. And uh, unfortunately, this particular book is, is out of print and I had to uh, buy this one off of eBay. But uh, if you can get a hold of this one, this is a good one to use. All right, so with those um, those published sources of information in hand, we're going to proceed forward and uh, try to replicate the textured thermal blankets on the upper surface of the orbiters. Now, this is not going to be easy. It's going to be a painstaking task. But essentially, the plan is this. I'm going to use this uh, diagram primarily, although I'm going to cross-check it with uh, some imagery in my return to flight book here and um, I'm going to try to recreate um, all these lines between the thermal blanket sections and I'm going to do that with a very very thin evergreen strip this is 0 0.010 times 0 0.020 uh, inches or basically a quarter millimeter by half a millimeter and uh, the idea is to put down uh, all these different divisions which is going to be a bit painful um, but not particularly hard, just time consuming. And then after we've done that uh, on the sides of the orbiter and the tail and on the wings to some degree, um, then I'm going to spray a thinned out um, squadron white putty on these areas and I'm going to use an armor Zimrick creating, creating tool which creates a texture uh, on armor models. and. Uh, use that to create the texture of the thermal blankets and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to sand off the highlights of that to smooth it out a little bit and uh, and then we'll see what we have uh, there's some additional physical tile work to be done along the tail and around the engines and and I'll have to do that too just like I did with the beanie cap but uh, all in all if we pull this off it'll be pretty spectacular alright so I'll update on some uh... In progress here. 
can probably see how I'm framing out uh, where I'm going to put the, uh, the tile texture, the thermal blanket texture, I should say. And uh, this is not really that difficult, it's just uh, time consuming. Um, each of these squares is 3 eighths of an inch. And I've got them all measured off. And it's nothing to it really. All I'm doing is uh, taking a little bit to me extra thin, putting it right there at the base where I need it. It's actually a little bit too much there. And then I'm taking this, lined up where I need to, right there. Taking my hobby knife, cutting it, and we on to the next one. I actually got a little too much glue on that one because I was showing you. I'll do another one real quick. A little less glue. You want just enough to tack the end of this end. Just enough to tack the end of it in so you can cut it before you glue it down all the rest of the way. Try to keep it as square as possible. Cut. A bit of glue. Off to the next one. stays in place with a little glue. Cut. And there you go. Just like that. So in this fashion I'm going to go around and uh, frame out every thermal blanket on the entire orbiter including the tail as you see here and also uh, the sides of the fuselage. So that's going to take me a little while, so I'll get back to you in a bit.